I should say is uh, a lot of you sat here may have been expecting Mark Tai, the Managing Director for Catax. Uh, Mark, unfortunately, isn't so well. Um, so you've got me instead. But uh, I'm a little bit taller, which always helps them. Mark, he's quite small. And uh, I'm Sales Director for the group. So hopefully you'll bear with me while I, I walk through the content in terms of uh, giving you a professional approach to capital allowances. You'll see the, the tagline there in terms of uh, win new business, retain your business, and win business back. That's not actually just a, a strap line, it's, it's a reality. Um, we have dealt with probably 70 of the top 100 accounting firms in the UK. We also have now just over 2,000 chartered accountants that we deal with on a regular basis across England and Wales. And the reality is that they use this as a, as a tool to do one of those three things. Uh, and some of the organizations, and I, I, I can kindly name Haynes Watts today, are particularly proactive in utilizing the capital allowances solution as a way of engaging new clients and uh, realizing additional fees as they go through. So essentially what I'm gonna cover off is uh, the agenda behind, but it, it really boils down to talking a little bit about, about the people, about the policies, uh, about the proposition itself, and then about the process as to how you realize the benefits for your clients. So a little bit about CATAX as uh, our pedigree, I, I guess, as, as to what we're about. We've been trading for five years and have achieved over, over, over 4,000 cases to date with an average value per property of 125,000 pounds of capital allowances identified in those commercial properties. So quite successful. We're 44 people, uh, and that's from the front end sales to the back office capability of report writing and case management. And the important thing is we all look in one direction. So we don't get distracted, we don't sell other products, we don't have other specialisms, we exclusively focus and execute against capital allowances in commercial property. So for those of you which are chartered accountants in the audience today, essentially we engage as an outsource partner. We're not working with your clients, we're not gonna to look to sell your clients anything else. We exclusively work for you with your client base only against the capital allowances. ISO 9001. I think it's very important here because in an outsourced capacity, you're trusting us with your valued relationships. And what this really says is we have a great customer experience. The, the experience literally is at the heart of what we do. We make sure that we, we have involvement and engagement and awareness from including yourselves as a partner, essentially, to also making sure that your clients are fully informed of what's happening every single step of the way. And in doing 4,000 cases, what that really has given us over, over, over these years is two things probably. It's given us a great depth of knowledge, essentially the IP, in knowing exactly what can be claimed, where it can be claimed, when it can be claimed, and also a pretty strong relationship with HMRC, if you can have a strong relationship with HMRC. But our technical team, run by Dan, our technical director, the, the task every day is, is essentially to work with the revenue and make sure by the time we make a submission on a report, it's not going to be challenged because we've, we've made them party to the negotiation from very day one. So there are never any hiccups at the end of the course. We'll always see any objections early doors and we'll start to negotiate those accordingly. And the bottom line there, we're proud to, to say that two weeks ago, we announced our strategic relationship, an exclusive relationship with the Institute of Chartered Accountants for England and Wales as, a, as an affinity partner. And what that's really given us now is, um, yes, a route in, in terms of channel to talking to you guys, uh, certainly those who are members of the ICAW, but actually ICAW chose to work with us because they saw real value in having a player that understands this niche part of the market. It's always a challenge for you guys to, to have to know everything about everything. If you take tax just as a specialism, that's, that's challenging enough. And certainly to the high street accountant with a, a practice that doesn't have that specialism, when you then break it down to that niche of capital allowances, then you need to look at someone in the industry who's expert in that particular knowledge. And that's what we're affording to do with the ICAW, that you can now go online as of today, you can, you can register as an ICAW member, and you'll have free support for the forthcoming 12 months. That's a free telephone helpline, and it's a free uh, access to, to a portal which will give you documentation on uh, policy, compliance, governance, and all of the legislation. 
for that's as of now. So, what are capital allowances? Um, so, essentially, uh, as the video was saying, if if your clients are uh, a UK taxpayer and they own commercial property, then there is a very strong chance that they can claim those capital allowances. And they cut across probably the, the four areas, if you divide them so, of the land, of the buildings, the plant and machinery, and the integral features. Now, typically, and we've seen this in most occasions, when an acquisition is made of a new commercial property, most accountants, not all, but most accountants, will enter that acquisition, that £1 million care home, will go onto the balance sheet as land and buildings, and will stay there just as land and buildings. Just hold that thought. So the reality is, as, as a UK taxpayer, then you, there are certain qualifying assets that you can claim. Uh, in addition to the, to the, I guess, the very obvious plant and machinery, it's those elements that you might not readily think about. It's the bits which, which actually uh, are going to be probably in the ceiling. They might be in the floor, they might be in the walls, the heating, the lighting, the cabling and the like. And actually then there are, there are particular peculiarities and values against those assets which have to be determined. The net effect is they can be offset against tax liabilities or can be claimed back to create a tax rebate if they haven't been claimed previously. Also available, providing it's the same legal entity, is the ability for sideways relief. And I'll make mention at this point, because it's a, it's a common question about the impact of capital gains. Um, just to be clear, that is, if the, if the commercial property is, is sold at a profit, there is no negative impact to capital gains. And that's in the TCGA, uh, so the Capital Gains Act uh, of 1992, Section 41 is quite clear in terms of the, the impact and the relationship for capital gains against capital allowances. So, going back to the thought where it's showing on the balance sheet of 100% as land and buildings, the reality in our experience is that uh, typical 25% of that acquisition, of that £1 million per home, is actually sat in allowable assets in terms of plant and machinery and the integral features. That's 25% that can be claimed for allowances in this scenario. March last year, there was a, an article written in The Guardian, which is uh, an interview with a tax partner from Deloitte. Uh, uh, interesting to say that the view of the market is such that nine out of 10 commercial owners have not claimed capital allowances either at all or to the full extent that they are available. So that's quite considerable when you think of, I guess, the, the addressable market that that makes available. And in our experience over many years, the chartered accountants that we deal with, so your, I guess, average, if there is such a thing as the, the, uh, the average chartered accountant practice, will have usually in a, nine or 10 percent or more of their client base that actually own commercial property. So there's an awful lot to be considered. So, legislation. Um, this has been around for many, many years. This has been around since uh, the 40s. It's in over 130 countries today. Uh, but the legislation is, is as much as 14,000 pages in total when you look at all of the elements of compliance and governance. And it, it's ever changing from first year allowances to changes just recently in the annual investment allowance which has moved from 25,000, as you know, to 250,000 pounds in January of this year. And things like the agricultural building allowance, industrial building allowance, all of these elements, together with write-down allowances, have started to make a difference to the calculations and the benefits particularly available to your clients. One of the main changes was, was in 2008, when the integral features were allowed and the special pooling was brought into play of what was then 10% is now 8%. Uh, the next major change is in the 2012 finance bill, which actually implements in its, in its sort of full vigor from, from April of next year. So from April of 2014, basically it will be mandatory on sale. So this is not legacy business, but on mandatory new business that's done from April of next year, you will have to pool those assets. 
there will have to be a value established and what is termed as an S198 or S199 will have to be completed and declared within a two year period. If that isn't done, you will lose it. And when I say you, I'm talking about the vendor with any opportunity to claim back or the acquiring party. And you could be acting for either of them in terms of your professional advisor status. So I guess the, uh, the watch phrase on this particular one is to make sure that you pull it or you lose it. Now obviously that starts to come into the specialist requirements of some of the capital allowance players out there. Again, just, just to define, I guess, the type of business we, we have written, just to give some integrity to what we're saying so far. Uh, it said on the video there, half a billion pounds has been realized over, over recent years. Uh, we're, we're, we're probably entertaining near on 150 cases per calendar month now. Uh, and the reality of that is, that is a small proportion of the market. There are 1.4 million commercial properties. Uh, we believe we were, we were probably the, or at least one of the largest of writing business in the last full financial year with HMRC. But that means there is a huge market which is not being engaged currently by the professionals in order to explore the opportunity, um, or indeed the risk, of capital allowances. So, what's the qualifying criteria? Well, so we go back to the, to the key two points. And if you can remember just the key two points, are they a commercial property owner? Are they paying UK tax? And that's in any of the guys, in any of the legal entities that you can think of in terms of sole trader, partnership, corporate, even if they are outside UK but own the property in the UK and paying UK property tax. So as long as they are paying or have a liability to pay and they own that same asset, there will be an opportunity to claim if it hasn't been claimed before. We put a figure on there of £500,000. Um, that's not a policy, that's more of a guideline. That's to suggest below half a million pounds, then there isn't particular economic viability to pursue a claim, purely in, in the normal corporate 20% return. However, if you were a dentist, high rate net worth and high rate uh, taxpayer with maybe 40%, then it probably is going to be worthwhile looking at a figure which is lower than £500,000. And the other thing to remember here is it is the purchase price which is relevant and it is the purchase price which counts in terms of the catalyst to the claim. It's not the valuation. So we're quite often asked about older properties and a care home that's worth £2 million today, but if they bought it for £200,000 way back when, then it's a £200,000 figure. Now where that does change on occasions is where there's been transfer of ownership, maybe between families or between limited company and partnership or vice versa. So it's the last formal transaction in terms of the purchase price of that commercial entity. This is just to, I guess, give a, a very clear snapshot of, of the breadth of the marketplace. It really is any commercial property. And you can see that the rates are varying from 12% to 25% and everything in between. So whether it's, a, whether it's a light industrial site or whether it's a fully fledged hotel, all of those are going to have uh, an element of consideration which would prove positive, providing they're paying tax and providing they own that commercial benefit, uh, uh, commercial property at typically over half a million pounds. You can probably break those down to five key sectors. So there's the hospitality sector, in terms of hotels, restaurants and the like. There's the care, there's what it says on the tin, office in general. There's motor, we do an awful lot of petrol forecourts that wouldn't readily think in front of mine. So, just some case studies, and I'm not going to go through all of these, um, but again, it's, it's just trying to illustrate the, I guess, the size of the prize. It can be quite substantial to the, uh, the bottom left, there's an illustration of a hotel, and that's, that's a little bit different and interesting how, how the hotel market is, is approaching capital allowances. We uh, recently struck um, uh, an alliance that we announced about two months back now with the, with the British Hospitality Association, which is the voice of the hotel industry. And they have a political uh, motivation to have 300,000 new jobs uh, in the UK by 2015 in the 18 to 24 sector. Now, that's one illustration, and I can show you more just over, over recent weeks, that have actually 
uh, have been the catalyst to change for some of the hoteliers where they've been realizing some capital out of a capital allowance claim by way of rebate, making an immediate investment and now doing the bar refit that they couldn't do till probably the next couple of years, they're doing it now and now they can employ those two or three people that they otherwise wouldn't have employed. So there's a very, there's a very positive message that's starting to feed through when people are realizing uh, the, the true value of capital allowances. It isn't just the cash that comes back out or the offsets that they can realize in the future, it's the ability of what else you can do with those revenue streams and other investments that you can now make in terms of growth of your business, employment factors or supply chain impact, all to the positive, of course. So. I, I've talked about the accountants engagement here because it's, um, it's a question that we get asked quite often. But, you know, a lot of uh, our sales and marketing people will talk to accountants and there'll be a little bit of resistance and it may be because there's, there's not as much knowledge but that's okay because the normal chartered accountant in the practice is the GP and you're not supposed to know everything about everything so that's where we come in in that outsourced capacity or there is just a, a concern in terms of, well, how do I go to my client and have a conversation that says, I've got something for you, and their response is, why didn't you tell me about this before? It's, it is a perception, it's a myth, it really doesn't happen. You know, we have, we have pretty much 4,000 happy clients with a smile on their face, so the, the end result is very positive in dealing with the accountant, and there's always that explanation of a, a catalyst such as the change to the annual investment allowance, or to the impact of April 2014, which is now prompting you to review the portfolio that your client has. So it's all very legitimate. In addition to that, we don't expect you to start selling and spending lots of time on this. We have some, some very uh, easy tools, which basically will do some background analysis with you to determine which of your clients are appropriate to approach. So you're not even wasting time going to talk to clients that we know there isn't going to be a deal to be done. So we can work with you in the background and that's, that's, that's a very short piece of work. In addition to that, we have a partner hub, so you will have a clear transparency in terms of what's happening at, at any stage in the process, so there's full communication with your client. And I have to say, and I make that point very clearly, it is your client, it's not our client. We're borrowing your client for a period of time, we're doing this piece of work and we're giving you the client back. So it really is as simple as this. Time-wise, it's uh, I always say it's hours, not days, and it is. We try and we try and take it away. I'm not going to over-engineer this. Our back office capability is such that we will own the process, concept to conclusion. So of course there is there is the the involvement in your true capacity as a professional advisor, but in terms of the additional labour, there isn't any for you. And the final question there is: Can I can I charge for this? You know, um, someone said to me. Uh, the definition of an accountant, and I'll read it to you, because it was, it was basically someone who solves a problem that you didn't know you had in a way that you didn't understand and then charges you for it. Well, actually, this is a problem that I think your clients would be, would be absolutely happy for you to identify, and the charging structure is such that it's very modest from our part to the client, and we recognize your input in terms of an introducer fee. So there are no additional costs coming from you to your clients. So a, a real value add and a very strong relationship builder. This is just one of the tools um, that we would work through. We call it the benefit analysis. Again, it's to be absolutely transparent with you and your clients to determine well, what's the value of doing business with a capital allowance as professional. Actually, this illustration is trying to be very uh, clear as to what you get in the first two years. And that's usually because we would go back to the last close year and we can make adjustments to current year and to the following three in terms of write down. All the variables of course are going to be the, the, uh, the tax position of the client, the purchase price uh, and then the different pooling mix or any involvement of, of uh, an annual investment allowance consideration. But it's very clear from day one what we believe the net benefit to be and how our charging structure would be placed to your client. So the process, really simple. It's eight steps. We, we have an instruction from the client, and that instruction is made on the back of our proposition, which again, as you heard in the video, we try and keep it as, as risk-free as possible. And we will have your client cash flow positive, that actually, usually there's a rebate due, and we won't ask for our fees until the rebate has been recognized and the benefits have been realized by your client. 
So it really is a very, very seamless process. And that's the, that's the start of what we do next. The stage two is appointment of a, of, of a case manager that will then own the whole project until it's concluded. The first piece of work is what we call first questions. It's that due diligence stage in terms of making sure that the values are what we thought they were, the entity is what we think it is in terms of ownership, and it hasn't been claimed before, or if it has been claimed before, to what extent and what proportion, because the assets can only be claimed once, of course. So we do that due diligence. Once we know that is a clean bill of health, we will proceed to survey, in-house surveyor, we'll go to site, uh, meet with your client or key holder, whoever it may be, and we'll do what we term as a forensic survey. So a very detailed piece of work identifying, qualifying and photographing all of the assets that we are going to lay a claim against. And that includes things from the obvious things like the air conditioning to certain door closers, etc. And we'll be very specific because the peculiarities of the, the policies allow us to make claims, for example, in an air conditioning scenario, when it's, when it's exiting the roof space, there's a certain amount of tile that can be claimed for because of the interruption of the air conditioning system. So there are, there are variable policies that are allowable by HMRC. Once that comes back, it's put into a report in a, in a, in a fashion that's accepted by the revenue uh, under the, the Capital Allowances Act of 2001. That's submitted in a shorter version to you as the professional advisor for tax computation, sign off by you, and then you present to HMRC as the agent of the client. On acceptance by HMRC, which because we've been working with them through the process, we know that will go through, if there's a rebate due, that comes within 21 days of claim. So again, cash flow positive. So, um, just, just, just a couple or three of the, I guess the frequently asked questions is, first of all, can we go back to, to older properties, those that are maybe 10 years old? The answer is yes. Um, we say that's, that's, that's about the limit, not, not through any policy, purely because of the economic viability. Remember the, the purchase price versus valuation. So that's where that tends to be. But our, our due diligence and what we're bound to do by revenue to qualify if any claims have been laid previously is back to 1996. So we're pretty thorough in terms of the tools that we use in order to qualify in or out any claim. I touched on capital gains before, and again, just to reiterate, no negative impact if the, if the commercial property is to be sold at a profit. What are the costs? Our costs are to the client. Uh, they'll vary from capital allowance player to capital allowance player, but we're, we're very modest in terms of where we position our fee structure. And again, if we want to talk about specific opportunities, uh, if you want to go over to our stand, maybe after this presentation or during the course of the next couple of days, we'll certainly work through with you some of maybe the hypothesis of the benefits to your own client. And the process, how long does it take? Well, it's, um, it, can be, it can be as short as four or six weeks. It can be as long as 12 and 13. And the, the bit in the middle is down to, I guess, guys and girls like you, uh, and the solicitors particularly, in terms of how quick those responses are going to come through when we do our, our first questions on due diligence. Uh, and it usually makes a difference if you're involved from the off, and we ideally try and triangulate that relationship to make that happen from day one, because that works perfectly well. Or if you're not the incumbent, so if they've got to go back to a, to a previous accountant in order to realize some historical data, that tends to take a little bit of time as well. So, capital allowances, um, considerable market opportunity across the piece, over 90% of commercial property not claimed today. The proposition is uh, very straightforward, very transparent, very non-committal. Wouldn't like to say don't win, uh, no win, no fee, but it is a no win, no fee scenario. As I said earlier, if you want to know a little bit more, we're on a stand uh, A304, which is just at the other side of the hall.